Today on Film Women, we're in the Speed Force. Nice, huh? Run, Barry. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Woo! Just kidding, it's me. And yes, I do have a giant SpongeBob balloon because guess what? It's my birthday. And what better way to celebrate your birthday by getting up at 6 a.m. and making a tutorial show, right? Right? No? That's not how you celebrate a birthday? Oh. Anyway, let's check out these requests. So, a whole buttload of you asked for a flash speed force effect. So, that's what we're doing today. Now, in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor on a green screen doing their thing inside the speed force. Whatever that may be, I'm not judging. And of course, you need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads, download the speed force effects pack, which contains all the components we need to build the speed force. Now, you got all that? Well, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects 2018. Yes, I've finally updated it. We've got our comp set up and ready to go. So, as you can see, all I have is, well, nothing in here. So let's start by building the Speed Force using the download pack, because it's actually pretty dang easy. Firstly, let's head up and grab a new solid. Let's select a color and then type the number I have right here. 152639. This will give you a nice dark royal blue. Let's then click OK. From there, we'll head over to the project settings and grab cloud one and drop that in on top of our solid. Now gang, this is just some swirling clouds I made in Trapco Particular. And since a lot of you don't have Particular, as it's kind of on the pricey side, I've skipped how to make this. But if we check out a preview really quick, you can see this is the base of our speed force effect. From there, we need to add some camera lens blur to this layer. Because if we check out a clip from the show, right here, you can see that everything is out of focus behind Cisco. And you all know I love me some camera lens blur. So let's head up to effect, blur and sharpen and add camera lens blur. And then we're gonna crank that blur all the way up to 12. Next, let's add a bit of harshness to our cloud just to make them stand out. For this, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer up here like so. And then from there, we're gonna head to effect, color correction and add brightness and contrast. And there we go. And then I'm gonna crank the contrast up to around 65. That looks pretty good and makes our cloud stand out a little bit more. From there, it's time to add our particles. So let's, well, grab the footage mark particles and drop them in on top of everything and change the transfer mode to add. Let's then hit Control D to duplicate it and then we're gonna work on these layers individually. Firstly, the bottom layer. Let's head up to effect, stylize and add a glow. From there, we're gonna simply increase the radius to 34. Done. Next, let's change the color of these particles slightly to match our scene and our example. For that, let's head to Effect, Color Correction and add a Hue and Saturation. We'll then set it to minus 31. Much better, they stand out much more now. We're then going to copy that Hue and Saturation effect and paste it on our top layer. And lastly, let's finish these particles off with the effect that we all know and love. We'll head to Effect, Obsolete and Fast Blur. And then from there, we're just going to crank that up to around 18 just to make these particles a little softer. Now, let's check out a preview. It's getting there, but in the show, the speed force almost swirls around like a tornado and bends around the frame. So let's totally cheat that effect, okay? Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, then head to Effect, Distort and add Optics Compensation. From there, we're gonna check Reverse Distortion, and then we're gonna crank this son of a gun up to 50. Now you can see that by giving our footage that kind of reverse fisheye effect, that it gives the impression that it's moving around the camera instead of just moving left to right. Cool and easy. Next, let's grab our lightning pass footage and drop that into the comp. From there, change the transfer mode to screen and then hit Control D to duplicate it. From there, we're gonna camera lens blur once again. This time, we're gonna set it to 20 and then check repeat edge pixels. Mm, done. Next, let's grab the top lightning layer, head to effect, obsolete and grab fast blur and then let's really crank that up and i mean really crank it up to like 215 and once again make sure you check repeat edge pixels okay it's getting better now guys be sure and drop your preview quality down to quarter just like i have because this will take forever to preview on full quality and next step is to add our coloring and exposure layer. Now guys, this layer will basically turn the screen that orangey color and blow out the exposure a little when the lightning shows up on screen. 
I've made mine with Exposure and Colorista 3 from Red Giant, but you can use Exposure and any combination of color correction to achieve the same result. Once you're happy with the color, we're then gonna hit T to bring up opacity, and then we're gonna animate the opacity frame by frame based on the amount of lightning in the shot at any given time. This will be the most labor intensive part of the effect, but if you take your time, it's gonna look cool. Now guys, personally, I'm running low on time, so I'm just gonna show you my animation settings on screen right here, and just run through them slowly to give you a basic idea of what I did. You can see that when a big burst of lightning's on screen, like the first frame here, we have our layer set at 100% opacity. And when the lightning is off screen, it's back down to zero. Now for a slightly off screen lightning like this one here, we're not exactly at 100%, we're around about 75 to 89, and so on. Once it's off screen, back down to 0%. Honestly guys, I wish I could spend more time on this part, but we gotta move on. Time is of the essence, it's my birthday. Our next step is to add our actors keyed footage. Now I've already keyed myself out, so I'm just gonna drop that comp straight in, boom. Now, from there, you do have to color correct your actor to match the scene. Now I've already done this using Colorista, but you can use whatever coloring software you like. Just make sure that you've got that sort of bluey look on your actor, just so it matches the scene. Now, we also wanna add the coloring and exposure effect that we've just done before to our actor, but not quite as harsh as the background. So here's how we do that. Let's copy our coloring adjustment layer, open up our keyed actor comp, and then paste it in on top. We can then make adjustments to both the exposure and the coloring to make them a little less harsh. Just find a balance that you like, have a good play guys. And then be sure and jump back to the final shot to see how it looks as you are adjusting. Jump back and forth as many times as you like, gang. Now once you are happy, head back to your final comp and let's add the last two layers to make up the shot. Firstly, let's drop the footage called Particle Front on top of everything and change the transfer mode to Add. Next, let's grab the footage called Cloud Front and drop that on top of everything and change the transfer mode to Screen. If we check out a preview, these two layers are the things that are whooping by in front of your actor, so it makes it look more like there's something actually circling around them. Now one quick little cherry on top that I'm just gonna experiment with, I think I'm gonna grab that lightning pass layer, the blurred one on top, and I'm gonna duplicate that, and then I'm gonna grab it and drag it on top of our actor. Now let's check out a preview of that. Ooh, that looks kinda cool. It's actually giving sort of a little bit of flaring over the top of the actor, and it helps to sell the fact that the lightning is breaking behind them and sort of bleeding through a little bit. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna keep that. Alrighty, that is everything done. All we have to do now is add a little shake. So to do that, let's hit Control A to grab everything, right click, and then we'll hit Pre-Compose. From there, you can just name this pre-comp, whatever the hell you want. I'll just name it, I don't know, Final. And then I'm gonna head to Presets and type Shake and then grab Red Giant's Camera Shake plugin. This is from Red Giant Universe, and guys, if you don't have this, I've left a link in the description of some free Camera Shake plugins to use. Now, all I'm gonna do here is just grab a Camera Shake preset. Mm, this one called Car Mount looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna simply tweak it to match the Speed Force Shake in the show. I'll turn up the X to uh, 20 and the Y to 30, and then just make sure the motion blur is set to high. Now if I check out a quarter strength preview, this does look pretty good, but since we have a buttload of blur layers and this shake layer going on, I'm not gonna preview it in full quality now. We'll just cut to the final product in a sec. But for now gang, that is the speed force effect. Done. Add up all of those steps and you get something like this. Today on Film Learning, we're in the speed force. Nice, huh? So guys, that is my take on the Flash Speed Force effect. As you can see, it's pretty easy to put together once you have those components in place. Now guys, I just want to let you know the 60K Short Film Award Show is still coming. I have sent everyone out their certificates of participation, so just check your email box and you've probably got one there. But we've still got a few guest presenters that I need to wrangle, and as soon as I do, you'll see it on the screen. So guys, that is gonna do it for this Flash Speed Force episode of Filmland. I'm gonna head back inside and enjoy the rest of my 37th birthday. Yes, I'm old. But if you did enjoy this episode, it really does help if you smash that like button, guys. And if you are new here, why not hit subscribe and turn those notifications on, even if you are subscribed so you don't miss a single episode. My social media crap is above my head. Facebook, Twitter, I post a lot of work in progress stuff all the time, guys. And until next week rolls around, keep learning. Yeah.